What is up guys? Welcome back to another Geek of What video and today I've finally got for you a Ryzen 3000, Ryzen 3rd Gen Zen 2, whatever you want to call it, gaming PC build for you. I'm going to be putting it together live and explaining all of the components that I selected for this build and why. You guys have been asking frantically in the comments section below uh, for Ryzen 3rd Gen builds. And here we are. Now, some of the benchmark figures we've seen already from Ryzen 3rd Gen have been really impressive, and I'm excited to test it out for myself later on. In short though, this CPU's got six cores and 12 threads, which is great for the multi-threaded side of things, as well as a base clock speed of 3.6, and a turbo boost clock speed of up to 4.2 gigahertz, which gives it the single-threaded performance to crucially rival uh, the advantage that Intel arguably wants and no longer has uh, over AMD. AMD CPUs. Now this B450 motherboard from MSI is going to work just a treat. More and more of these B450 boards should start shipping uh, with the latest BIOS needed for Ryzen 3 uh, very soon, so do make sure you double check that. Uh, but all in all, this board's got everything we need. We've got a PCIe 3.0 slot, we've also got two RAM DIMM slots, uh, an M.2 slot for super duper fast storage, should we choose to use it, as well as plenty of USB 3 ports on the rear panel, and a little bit of a overclocking headroom. Installing the CPU is really, really easy. All you've got to do is, of course, first take it out of the box. Look at that. I mean, I say look at that, it looks exactly the same as the previous generation, but I'm told it performs a lot better. Now, one thing AMD has done very well for a long while is the included stock coolers that you get free with the CPU. In this build, we're not going to be using it because we want a bit more overclocking headroom and quieter operation. But if you're trying to save some cash, stick with this. It's going to work. No real overclocking headroom. It might be a little bit noisier, but it's far better than anything uh, Intel provide. And it's actually made by the guys at Cooler Master. So you know you can trust it. Installing a CPU on the AMD side is arguably even easier than with Intel. Out, line up the triangle on the socket with the triangle on the CPU. Give it a bit of a wiggle and it will drop nicely in place. And finally, pop that retention arm down and you're going to have no problems at all. Now, the next component that we want to install while our motherboard is out the case and easy to access is this, our memory. I actually went for the XPG Spectrix D60G, which I've handily unboxed already over here. Uh, some brand new memory from Adata's gaming XPG uh, brand, shall we say. This stuff looks fantastic uh, with full RGB diffusion across practically the whole memory dim and I believe uh, by surface area this is like the most RGB'd up memory you can currently buy. What makes it even better is that this 16 gigabyte 3000 megahertz kit has a good clock speed which Ryzen is gonna like. It's less important on third gen but the faster memory the better as a general rule of thumb and it's not too expensive either. I think aesthetically it looks great as well. All you've got to do to install your memory is pull back uh, the retention clips on either one or both sides of the dim slot where available and line up this notch on your RAM dim slot with this notch on your RAM dim slot. Sorry, I mean this notch on your RAM dim with this notch on your dim slot. We'll get there eventually. Simply then apply even pressure to both sides of the memory and it will create a satisfying click sound into place. We're going to repeat for the second RAM dim and just like that, job is indeed a good one. With our motherboard assembly, as we're going to call it, at pretty much the furthest stage it can go, it's time to move it into the case. And this is a really, really interesting choice. Now, this case here actually comes from a company called GameMax, and it's their Kamikaze Pro. What makes this case so special is its budget price point and packed out feature set. From the full mesh front panel that ensures top notch airflow to the four included 120mm addressable RGB fans. It's going to keep the system quiet, cool and everything running as efficiently as possible. Airflow is really, really important and that mesh panel with RGB not only works really great from a practicality standpoint, but looks fantastic. Finally, the MATX form factor is my personal favorite. Not too big, not too small, and all the necessary cable management options from the CPU to rubber grommets here, uh, and a power supply shield are nicely accounted for. Now, in order to install the motherboard, we first need to grab this, the rear IO shield, which creates uh, the interface between the back of your case and the motherboard, as of course, different motherboards have different port layouts, and snap it into the rear of the chassis.
At this stage of any build, I'd recommend grabbing the case uh, accessory bag or box, usually found in a hard drive sled somewhere, uh, and we're going to install any extra standoffs we need uh, before our motherboard is popped into place. Now with our motherboard successfully installed, I mean, I say installed, it really wasn't that hard. Uh, it's time to install, oh, I said it again. It's time to pop in our CPU cooler. That's a bit better. I opted for Cooler Master's Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition, a great budget option uh, that's a blacked out version of the legendary uh, 212 Evo. Great performance, nice and quiet, nice and cheap, and RGB, and we're not complaining at that. If you're spending less than $600, stock cool is probably the way to go. But in a build like this, the 212 RGB Black Edition is a great choice. Now with our CPU cooler, motherboard, case, uh, CPU and memory all ready to go, the build is really starting to come together. It's at this point where things get a bit more boring just for the moment. <laughs> now I opted to go for the Cooler Master MWE 550 Bronze Edition or Master Watt 550 for short. This is an 80 plus bronze certified unit uh, with a really good efficiency rating and a semi-modular interface, meaning you only plug in the cables that you really need, keeping cable clutter uh, to a minimum and making cable management easy. A power supply is a little bit boring, but it's gotta be uh, reliable, it's gotta be reputable, and that's exactly what this unit does. Oh, and it doesn't break the bank. Now I definitely recommend installing some of the semi-modular cables that you're going to need before you put it in the case because it is going to save you a headache later on. Now with the power supply installed and some of our front panel connectors all wired up, there's only one more component to go before we pop in the graphics card, which is what I'm sure you've all been waiting for. And that is of course the storage. I opted for a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda, the 7200 RPM speed is as fast as your mainstream consumer hard drives tend to get, and 2000 gigs of storage is gonna be enough for all uh, your Steam and Origin libraries, at least for the time being. Now I would recommend adding an SSD in here if you can afford it, something like Aviator's SX8200 Pro or their new RGB S40G if you're feeling a bit fancy. But the extra $100 here was just a little too far to stretch in the budget. But with the hard drive and storage all now installed and dealt with, it's time to take a look at the exciting one. The graphics card. Now this right here is the Gigabyte GeForce GTX 1660. It's hard to forget about some of the lower end, more affordable graphics cards in the lineup uh, with the release of so many of the new RTX GPUs lately. And you can find my review of the super lineup in the card section there-ish. Uh, now this card here, I say it's on the lower end, but it's actually providing performance to rival the outgoing uh, GTX 1060, which means 1080p gaming at 60fps is easily possible, and some 1440p gaming numbers, as you'll see in a few moments time, uh, are also fairly attainable. Now you can definitely see the construction on this card is slightly cheaper than the RTX lineup of course, uh, we're lacking any real RGB and equally the backplate is plastic but to me it seemed nonsensical to spend loads of money on a really high end 1660 when they're all going to perform, spoiler alert, practically the same because it's the same GPU chip in there. With that being said though, I think it's a pretty good looking graphics card, fairly lightweight and nice and affordable. But up to date pricing links if you'd like to learn more or buy them will be in the description below. But 
let's get it installed. Now that our graphics card is in, I've got to admit this system is looking absolutely sick. It's really well proportioned, it fills the case nicely, and I can't wait to see those RGB fans in action. So all that's left to do is cable manage it, close it up and turn it on. 